SMT Nation, we back. We've got two stories to look at today. The first one is from Visible Wireless, a prepaid brand of Verizon Wireless. Uh, so we'll discuss that first. And then the second story is out of T-Mobile. And, you know, it's a follow-up to uh, this, I guess we'll just call it the 2.5 gigahertz auction. It was essentially a T-Mobile auction. And when customers can expect to start seeing those benefits and the improvement to the network within the places affected by those newly gained licenses for the rest of that spectrum. So good news. Uh, and I think actually both these are good news. I'll link both description, both articles in the description box. And I'm going to put chapter markers for you guys in case you want to jump back and go back to stories uh, and whatever else you want to do. All right. So the first one is from Fierce Wireless. Visible acknowledges customer service problems. Uh, this is actually dated from a couple of days ago. I didn't get around to covering it yet, but I think it's important to note. Uh, there are a couple of things that are really nice about the visible prepaid wireless service from the uh, Verizon company. It offers the really large extensive network coverage of Verizon, but it does so at a less premium price point. You know, they got a $30 plan. They've got a $45 plan for a more premium experience and coming in with that single line pricing it's much better than a postpaid line when it comes to price. So when it comes to value, it's very attractive to some people. One thing that is clearly not good about the service, a weakness or a disadvantage or a con, is the fact that there is trouble when it comes to operational customer service. All right? When people are transitioning or porting in from another carrier, uh, there are so many different problems that seem to be happening. Uh, so the, this service, while it offers a nice little discount and it is a good price point, there are clearly shortcuts that are happening. And that seems to be where the shortcuts are. All right, people are complaining and having massive issues when trying to port in, uh, trying to, you know, get eSIMs provisioned, trying to get SIM cards sent to them, uh, issues with calling and texting. Uh, there, there are so many things, I guess the subreddit's loaded with people saying that they're losing service and they're having these types of problems. Uh, some people going through them for weeks at a time and the customer support and the customer chat and all these different online versions of getting help from customer care are not very good. They're not efficient. They're not really working. And that's, that's the visible model. It's getting away from the brick and mortar store not having uh, physical customer care reps within a retail space that's designed to save them money and allow them to trim the fat and decrease operational costs. But here it is rearing its ugly head. And one could argue that no matter what the price point at $30 a month, tax and fees included, or $40, $45 per month, tax and fees included, what does it matter what you're paying if you're not getting activated, if you're having trouble with the service? So the market responds to pricing. But again, if you don't have proper customer support and you have all these issues, customers are not going to be happy with the service. So the the operations like you see with like Twitter support and then the in-app chat agents, they got chat bots, they got all types of different things. It does not seem to actually be working. And this is not a new problem. It seems to be more problematic now that iPhone 14s and uh, more and more people, and especially these new manufacturer policies moving to eSIM only. You know, Samsung's next, you know, uh, all these things happening, eSIM being the future. It's probably going to continue to be a problem unless there is a complete overhaul to customer care management and customer care policy. So I would not be shocked unless they were to completely change everything at the company. A lot of these things will continue to happen, and I really do hope that they improve that. You know, but for Visible to come out and acknowledge that they have customer service problems, that's part of the problem. I think they knew they had customer care problems. You know, they, there's no way they would be oblivious to that. Uh, but they are going to have to pivot, adjust, and fix many things to make this right. For customers to be weeks in limbo in trying to port in a number, say from Cricket or say from Boost or whatever, a postpaid provider, you can't be in limbo for two weeks with your main line. I My recommendation and my advice to you all, if you plan on trying Visible or if you plan on using Visible, I'm not sure if I can recommend it, especially for a primary line. 
if you have any type of number that you care about, I would not advise you to use Visible. There are just too many issues related with customer care and all those things that could happen on the back end. I would advise you to start with a new number or experiment with a number you don't care about that maybe you use as a secondary line from carry to carry and it moves all the time. I would not do a primary service line with them. No way, no how. Too much trouble. It's too risky. Uh, there's a lot of people that have like two-factor authentication with their numbers associated and other things. I just can't advise it as great a value as it is. You know, getting you know such a, a great entry point for a large network access and in some places like in my market, it's very capacitive and it's a good experience. It's just too hard to recommend. Don't do that to yourself. You know, kind of either choose another carrier, another option that's more secure, uh, that's more reliable, and, and you get trust with this type of thing. Uh, but th that's my advice to you. So do it at your own risk until they get things worked out. And uh, we'll we'll definitely do an update as, as these things come to fruition. All right, transitioning over to the next story. This one for T-Mobile, link in the description. T-Mobile will deploy the new 2.5 gigahertz spectrum ASAP, dated from September 19th. All right, so T-Mobile plans to deploy the new spectrum that it won in the recent auction of spectrum in the 2.5 gigahertz band as soon as it receives its licenses from the FCC. Now, the reason it's getting it directly from the FCC like this under these terms is these are white space licenses. And a lot of these licenses are available in rural America. And the reason why this is important is because this allows T-Mobile to have a less fragmented, more uniform and contiguous high capacity coverage with this frequency band, N41. T-Mobile did a nice job to secure somewhere in the area of over 90% of the spectrum licenses that were available in the auction. I think their uh, bids totaled over $300 million dollars. They got off really cheap, actually. Verizon didn't really get involved. AT&T didn't get involved. Dish didn't get involved. And they were all present for the auction. They all put in applications. They could have bid. It doesn't look like anyone did, actually. The demand and the supply were equal for most of the auction. The exception is when you look at that 9%, those may have been some regional carriers or fixed wireless providers within some of these areas. So uh, according to the press release from T-Mobile, 7,000 county-based licenses covering 81 million people in primarily rural areas. This allows T-Mobile, again, to really thoroughly, comprehensively build out their N41 5G UC. And then in those areas, you know, the the home internet, for, uh, T-Mobile 5G home internet really becomes a viable option for some people getting away from satellite and definitely uh, getting away from DSL and competing with cable, especially with the pricing on the T-Mobile home internet, 50 bucks. With auto pay, it makes it quite attractive. Uh, it, additionally, it allows them to probably add some more pops of coverage, right? They they say that now, according to their most recent estimates, they're at 235 million pops nationwide. They're looking to reach 260 by the end of the year. And then by the end of next year, uh, they want to hit the 300 million uh, pops. Uh, the extended range 5G is their low band stuff. Uh, they've pretty much had that nationwide for a while now and that covers 320 million people so they'll probably continue to also build that out in places where they haven't yet upgraded there are some older sites there's some sprint sites that could use it so in that process they'll probably be upgrading the low band 5g as long as as well as the 5g uc uh, and according to t-mobile's ceo mike sievert he said the new spectrum accelerates the company's mission to build the leading wireless network in america and he's speaking to the leadership in 5G. Most 5G, best 5G, fastest 5G, the all things 5G. All right, so this is good news, and we're expecting to see this very soon. All they're just waiting is clearance from the FCC, and then wherever T-Mobile already has the gear upgraded, the radios can be kicked up to be able to utilize more of the bandwidth. So, you know, if there's a place where they have no N41 or they have 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz and they get an additional 40 megahertz or 20 megahertz, you're going to see speeds essentially maybe double. So if you were seeing two or three or 400 megabits per second, you might start seeing six, 700, maybe 800 megabits per second with that additional spectrum added on these tower sites. Very exciting, very good for some people and uh, good for competition, home internet, mobility, the whole shebang. 
let me know what you guys think of this story. Tell me about uh, you know, the the excitement that you might have, especially if you're from some of these rural places that got are, that are going to get some of these bandwidth increases. And then tell me about your experiences or your thought process on what Visible is doing with their customer care. Maybe you have previous experience with these things. You've seen the troubles and all those things, or this is one of the reasons why it keeps you away from it, maybe. Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter handle, my Gmail address for business inquiries, and my Patreon page. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.